Sound waves are periodic, repetitive. That means that there's some length of time, called a period, we'll call it capital T, so that no matter where we start looking, the wave at that point is the same as the wave at that point plus t. If we divide 1 by t, then we get the sound's frequency, which is what we perceive as pitch. But instruments and voices don't just differ in pitch, they have different sound qualities, different timbres. When we plot the sound wave, this shows up as the wave's shape. Another thing that's periodic is a circle, or something moving around in a circle. Every time it reaches where it started, it's at the same position. If we look at the moving object from the side, then it follows a sine wave. If the radius of the circle is 1, then the object will travel a distance 2 pi before it returns to where it started, so we say that the period of sine is 2 pi radians. If we want a sine wave to represent sound or something else that changes with time, then we can scale this part by the period that we want. Because of its connection to a circle, the sine and its counterpart, the cosine, are kind of the most simple waves that you can have. In fact, they actually form a basis for making any wave. What I mean by that is, if we take a bunch of sines and cosines, all with frequencies and integer ratios of each other, then we can add them all together to get any periodic function. This is called the Fourier series, and along with its close relative, the Fourier transform, it's one of the most important mathematical methods in science and engineering. We often call the wave with the lowest frequency the fundamental, and waves with frequencies of the fundamental times 2, times 3, times 4 are called harmonics. Let's try to make an interesting wave by adding up sines and cosines. I think a synthesizer can make more consistent waves than any other instrument, and it even has the shape of the wave drawn right on it, so let's try to make this square wave. Because the square wave is symmetric, you can convince yourself that we don't need any cosines, and for the same reason, we don't need any sines with even harmonics either. We only need sine waves with odd harmonics. Once you do the math, it turns out that the amplitude of the nth harmonic should be 4 over pi n, so they get more quiet as you go higher. Sure enough, if you add all those up, you start to get a square wave. The more you add, the better it looks. But the interesting thing for us, since it is March 14th, is that pi showed up here. It's left over from the math because we use circles to represent periodic motion. The fundamental, which is n equals 1, should have an amplitude of 4 over pi. It's actually taller than the square wave because higher harmonics will end up canceling this part out. So if we play a square wave note on the synthesizer, measure the peak voltage, then remove all of the higher harmonics and measure the peak voltage of the sine wave that's left over, then the ratio of those two voltages should be 4 over pi. We now have what may be one of the worst ways of measuring pi. So how do we get rid of the high harmonics? Well, analog synthesizers actually have something for that built in, because it sounds cool. It's called a low-pass filter, and it removes high frequencies and keeps lower ones. There's one problem, though. Low-pass filters do not have one sharp cutoff frequency. They gradually lower the volume as frequency changes. So if we tune our filter to the right frequency so that it completely removes all of the higher harmonics, It'll actually make the fundamental too quiet, and it won't be 4 over pi. See, this idea isn't entirely mine. I got it from this sentence from an electronics book, but they weren't using a synthesizer, they were using a custom filter that was steep enough to perfectly remove higher harmonics. There is a way to make the synthesizer's filter steeper, and that's by changing the resonance. When the resonance is turned up, it makes it so that there's a peak and gain right at the cutoff frequency, so we can use that to make a perfect sine wave. But unfortunately, the resonance can bring the gain higher than 1, so we don't know what the resonance should be if we want to find pi. I came up with one more way around this, though. The synthesizer can also make triangle waves. Just like square waves, we can take apart triangles into sine waves with a Fourier series, and the fundamental of a triangle wave turns out to be 8 over pi squared times the original. If we make a square wave and a triangle wave with the same amplitude, then we remove all of the higher harmonics, then the sine from the square wave will be pi over 2 times the sine from the triangle wave. The beautiful thing about that is it doesn't matter what the resonance is because both sine waves have the same frequency, so they both get amplified by the same amount. So we make a square wave and adjust the volume until it's at a certain amplitude. Then we turn up the resonance to whatever we want and we bring down the cutoff frequency until just a sine wave remains. 
If it goes down too much, it'll start to shrink, so it has to be right at the max size. Now we record the amplitude, turn off the square, turn off the filter, and turn on a triangle until it has the same amplitude as the original square wave. We adjust the filter until it makes a perfect sine wave again. It should be the same frequency as before. And we record the amplitude. The ratio of these two voltages should be pi over 2, but there is a lot of room for error, so I repeated this for a range of frequencies and resonances. Then I plotted it all and found the line of best fit. The slope should be pi over 2. So let's see what we get. With our understanding of 21st century mathematics, my synthesizer's estimation of pi is... 3. 3.0257. Yeah, we didn't even get a single decimal right. But honestly, that's better than I thought it would be, considering all the possible sources of error. And in all fairness, that's about as well as we knew it for a lot of human history. In fact, the synthesizer actually did a better job than the Bible. I hope you learned something, and enjoy your pie day.